Kurdish customs officials. They were rigorously scanning all arrivals' passports and asking aggressive questions in what was either Kurdish or Arabic. But as soon as I handed over my British passport, the official looked at me and said, thank you for coming, and stamped me through. I was surprised by this, although with hindsight I realised that Western men and some women, travelling light, alone and looking nervous, were a common occurrence. These officials knew exactly why we had come and were grateful for our efforts. While the politics of the Kurds might have been fractious in the extreme, to the average person, the fact that we foreigners had come to fight and possibly die for them, their kin and Kurds generally, meant that we received respect. That Suleymaniyeh is firmly in the hands of the PUK also meant we were safe, though I did not realise this until later. Outside the airport, I gave the contact number to a cab driver who, after ringing, received directions to a hotel in the bustling city. As we pulled up, my nerves were jangling, I'll admit, because this was the moment where I would find out if I was to get issued an orange jumpsuit and soon become acquainted with the wrong end of a gutting knife. The contact greeted me and took me up to a room where, to my great relief, I met some fellow volunteers waiting to go into Syria. There were four of us, two Americans, one Canadian and me. A couple of days later we were taken to a camp in the mountains near the border, enduring both a terrifying taxi ride to get there, which, in all seriousness, was one of the most dangerous things I endured in all the time I was involved in the war, and the suspicious glances of guards as we passed the checkpoints dotted throughout their territory. At the camp we settled in and started learning the Kurdish customs and language that we would need for our time in Rojavar. I discovered that shorts were an absolute no-no after going for a run and coming back to find the woman commander at the camp regarding me with outright horror. Long trousers were obligatory, as were long sleeves around YPJ. It was also here I was given my Kurdish nom de guerre, Botan, which is a mountain in the Kurdish region of Turkey. The YPG use a naming system to protect the identities of their members. Most of these are taken from specific areas that are of historical importance to the Kurds, meteorological conditions. Burushk, lightning, is a popular example, or words associated with revolution, such as Burkswedan, struggle. I waited at the mountain camp as more volunteers drifted in to make up a group to be smuggled across. This took a couple of weeks, and as new volunteers arrived, Veterans were passing through and heading home. This was an important opportunity to get information about the situation and what we were getting into from guys who had been there. It was here that we learned of the bounty that ISIS was supposed to have put on every foreign volunteer, prompting me to joke about how I could hand a lot of them in and retire a wealthy man, and leading to joshing about the actual respective value we would place on each other, normally in measurements of goats, and how we would be well advised to keep a bullet in our pockets for ourselves, or else a Daesh suicide grenade, if we came across one, that would detonate instantly. Taking your own life would be vastly preferable to capture by Daesh. It was plain that things were going to be rough when Shersh, Lion, staggered into the camp. He was a Brit who had served in a sabotage to Boer, and had been hit in the neck and jaw when a mine had been triggered, the explosion injured a number of volunteers and killed one young Australian, Reese Harding. The Kurds had limited medical resources and Serge was in a bad way with an infection setting in. Fortunately, one of the volunteers had medical training and cleaned the wound as best he could. Serge returned to the UK and after a brief recovery period came back to his beloved sabotage unit. At the end of June, my turn came. We crossed over the border and were taken to the Foreigners Academy, where we signed an agreement that we would serve at least six months in Syria with the YPG in return for our airfares home being paid, would try to learn Kurdish and undertake basic military exercises, and were issued YPG uniforms. We were, at the time...